Alleluia, Christ is risen. God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were one of heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches.
reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you that what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in the darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, who is he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches.
the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. When it was when it was when it was evening, the day of the re resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other d disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he, but he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the, all, although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you be believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not in this book. But these are, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God and that through believing in him, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Savior. I speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the church, we often refer to this day, the second Sunday of Easter, as Low Sunday. <laughs> That's because it often feels low compared to all the pomp and circumstance of last Sunday's celebration. The brass is gone, the lilies have wilted, and historically, attendance plummets. <laughs> but here we are, bucking the trend. Our Easter joy is palpable, and our alleluias are res resound with jubilant intensity. Thanks be to God. Well, on this low Sunday, which happens to coincide with my last Sunday at St. Paul's, I give thanks because it is on this Sunday each and every year that we hear one of the most profound passages in all of John's Gospel, the story of so-called Doubting Thomas. Poor Thomas, bless his heart, is forever typecast as a skeptic, Indeed, if you look in Microsoft Word and ask it for a synonym for the word skeptic, Doubting Thomas is right there. 
at the top of the list. It's true. But this characterization of Thomas is grossly unfair, and it obscures the true meaning of this passage. Thomas was, to be sure, slower to embrace the resurrection than his brethren, but he did not ask for anything more than what they received. The disciples believed because they beheld the risen Christ with their own eyes. Thomas simply wanted the same thing. Yes, far too often, Thomas is criticized for seeking proof, for wanting evidence of the resurrection. But can we really fault him for seeking proof that a dead man had come back to life? That is not what is remarkable about this story. What's remarkable about this story is the intensity with which the risen Christ seeks the one who longs to see him. What's remarkable about this story is that Christ does not leave Thomas mired in his doubt and in his longing. In this story, the risen Christ is revealed as one who will stop at nothing to encounter the one who longs to see him. Literally, he will walk through locked doors, doors locked from fear. And this, my friends, gives us hope that Christ will come to us even in the midst, perhaps especially in our doubts and in our disbelief. But let's be clear. Thomas did not only long to see the risen Christ. His criterion for faith was much more specific than that. And we'll remember from last Sunday's Gospel that simply seeing the risen Christ doesn't necessarily lead to belief or even to recognition for that matter. You'll recall that last Sunday, when Mary Magdalene encountered the risen Christ on Easter morning, she mistook him for the gardener. So listen again to Thomas's words. Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, I will not believe. Thomas longs to see evidence of Jesus's wounds, to know that the Jesus who is risen is also the Jesus who suffered. To know that the Jesus who escaped the tomb is also the Jesus who declared victory from the cross. And then, then upon seeing, upon laying his hands on the marks of the nails in Jesus, laying his eyes on the marks of the nails in Jesus' hands, Thomas is finally able to offer his confession of faith when he knows that the one who was pierced is the one who is risen, then he can exclaim with confidence, my Lord and my God. My friends, do not miss the true meaning at the heart of this story. The resurrection did not erase the signs of Jesus' suffering. And this is good news for us that it was in Jesus' wounds that he became recognizable for those who longed to see him, that his wounds were the very place where he came into focus. This is good news for those of us who bear our own wounds, indeed our own scars, and who live in a wounded world. The Gospel tells us that our wounds are not defects, that we do not need to hide our wounds, that we need not be ashamed of our scars. This Easter gospel seems to suggest that our wounds and our scars are so essential to our identity that they are visible in our glorified bodies when we are raised to new life just as they are visible in Jesus' glorified, resurrected, transfigured body. Coming 
as it does on the last Sunday of my time as your priest. This story renews my gratitude for my ministry among you. Because it is most of all, I think, that um, I give thanks for having been able to minister to you in your wounds, to tend to your spiritual wounds, to the wounds of loneliness, to the wounds of grief and heartache. I look out among you and see so many whose beloved spouses and parents I have commended to God's loving care. So to know that I have been able to be a priest to you in your grief is among the greatest gifts of this ministry. To be sure, I found great joy in being a teacher, in preaching the gospel, in administering the sacraments. But the thing that gave me more joy than anything else was being your pastor. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for entrusting me with this sacred privilege. I discerned my call to this ministry, to pastoral ministry, because my most profound experiences of encountering the risen Christ have occurred in my woundedness, in those times when my fear and anxiety caused me to question whether I was enough in the agony of physical pain from multiple spinal surgeries, in the throes of addiction many years ago that left me on the brink of despair, in all of those times when my faith was hanging by a thread, it was there that I encountered the risen Christ, breathing peace into my life. Not a pre... Not a not a peace that nullifies pain or eradicates suffering, but a peace that says, I will not abandon you. I will heal your wounds. I will give you new life. My prayer today is that each and every one of you might know this peace, that the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, may abide with you and all those you love this day and always, and that as you continue to walk faithfully as the body of Christ at St. Paul's, as you entrust new pastors to teach, preach, and tend to your wounds, I pray that you may come more and more to believe in Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, and that in believing in him, you may find life in his name, eternal, abundant, overflowing, grace-filled life. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered as believers who are one in heart and soul, let us pray through Jesus, the Son of God gloriously risen from the dead, saying, Alleluia, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Anne, our bishop, that through the gift of the Spirit, we may recognize God's presence with us. Alleluia, Lord, hear our prayer. For this parish family, that we who have not seen the risen Lord and yet have come to believe may be blessed in sharing the peace and forgiveness we have received. Alleluia. For all who are wounded in any way, that we may see Christ in the wounds of those around us and be instruments of healing and peace in their lives. Alleluia. Lord, For a blossoming of faith, that the light of the risen Christ, uh, of the risen Christ gift, may guide us and sustain us through all the challenges of life. Alleluia. For all those in need, especially those who suffer violence, are recovering from natural disasters or lack of resources for daily living, that the risen Christ will visit them with healing power, and new hope. For those who have died, remembering especially Ernie Suick and Bill Jones, that they, that they may now rejoice and be glad in fellowship with the risen Christ. Lifting our voices with all creation, with Mary the God-bearer, St. Paul the Apostle, St. Thomas, and all the saints who have borne witness to the risen Christ, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who gives us the Easter word of peace through Jesus Christ. Hear the prayers which we offer in the hope of glory and breathe upon us with your Holy Spirit. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always and unto the ages of ages. Amen. We're going to say a prayer now for Brandon as, we de as he departs. I'm going to read the letter first. Right? I got to pull out the letter. All right. So Bishop Anne sent along this letter, and I would like to read it to all of you. Dear Brandon and beloved ones of St. Paul's Church, you are in my prayers as you gather to worship and celebrate this season of ministry that you have shared. I am grateful, Brandon, for your ministry with and service to the people of St. Paul's Church during your time as assistant and associate rector. The many ways you have contributed to the life and mission of St. Paul's Church and the community of Cleveland Heights are to be commended. You have also contributed greatly to the life and ministry of St. Luke's in Cleveland, 
through your tenure as a trustee. The people of the Diocese of Ohio will miss you. May God bless you richly as you embark on this next journey in your life. And to the people of St. Paul's Church, thank you for your faithful ministry in seeking to share the good news of Jesus in Cleveland Heights. I am praying for you during this time of transition. It's always an adventure to see where the Holy Spirit takes us. God's peace, the right reverend, and be jolly. On Sunday, January 3rd, 2021, I was commissioned by the rector and senior warden of this parish as an assistant rector. I have, with God's help, and to the best of my abilities, exercise this trust, accepting its privileges and responsibilities. After prayerful and careful consideration, I have discerned a call to ministry in the parish of Trinity Church in the city of Boston. With gratitude for the ministry we have shared, I acknowledge that my tenure as associate rector ends this day. Do you, the people of St. Paul's, recognize and accept the conclusion of this pastoral relationship? Let us pray together. O God, oh God you, you have, have bound, bound us together for a time as pastor, pastor and people, people to work for the advancement of your kingdom in this place. We give you humble and hearty thanks for the ministry which we have shared in these years now past. We thank you for opening our hearts and minds again and again to your word and for feeding us abundantly with the sacrament of the body and blood of your Son. Now we pray, be with those who leave and with us who stay, and grant that we may always be close to each other in the communion of your saints. All this we ask for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Good morning and welcome. Special welcome to newcomers. We're so glad you're here today. What a day you've joined us. It's wonderful to have you. There is a newcomer card in the pew, and if you fill it out and put it in the collection plate as it comes forward, we can get you on our mailing list so you can learn more about all that's going on here at St. Paul's. But please feel welcomed here this morning. For those who are joining us from home, there is a link to the newcomer card below the video. Lots of ways to see all that's going on here. The insert in the bulletin, our Thursday e-news, uh, our website. Please take a look. Let us know if you have any questions. Uh, Patricia is out on vacation this week. She'll be back next Sunday. For our adults, if you have not yet been confirmed or baptized, or you're just curious about what it means to be an Episcopalian, our annual Episcopal Church 101 Inquirers course begins on April 17th. It runs on three Wednesday evenings, so please take a look in Sunday Notes to learn more. And please put on your calendar Friday, April 19th for Gabriel's ordination, 7 o'clock in the evening, Friday, April 9th. It'll be a wonderful occasion. And now after this service, please join us in Tucker Hall for a festive send-off for Brandon, we, are, we do have cards available in Tucker Hall for you to write a note of thanks to him. So when you come in to Tucker Hall, I'll, I hope you'll take a moment and um, fill one out. And it is the time for our birthday and anniversary prayer. So if you have a birthday or anniversary this month, I invite you to stand in your seat for our prayer. Stand up, Bob. Oh, you know. 
<laughs> You're encouraging someone to stand up. <laughs> Let us pray together. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Very good. Just a reminder that we invite children and their families to come up around the rail during the Eucharistic prayer. Now yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By Christ's death, he has destroyed death, and by Christ's rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. online to receive the grace of the sacrament by praying the prayer of spiritual communion found in your online bulletin. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants of your word and sacraments. We thank you especially for the work of Brandon among us. Grant that both he and we may serve you in the days ahead and always rejoice in your glory and come at length into your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs> Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.